This is a clip from the Red Cow Arcade podcast. I noticed that the Cinemassacre podcast um, did a, uh, a, a topic uh, in the interest of bottom feeding, like, like we are. They, <laughs> they, they, did a, they did a topic of, uh, of what's your favorite console um, of all time. Uh, and I was thinking about it. I think I have an answer. Do you? Is it just Super Nintendo for you? I mean, I would say there's I have multiple I, Super Nintendo, obviously, but would I, I, I like I've I've had a lot of good times of I had a lot of good times with the Wii Year, actually, like a lot of good games. Like I have very fond memories of um, mm-hmm. like Super Mario, uh, new Super Mario Wii and um, just, you know, I was in college at that time. So there's a lot of fun great. Like, par- party games at the time and um but yeah, Super Nintendo, you can't beat it. <laughs> yeah. And, the, think... and you know, the DS, I love the DS. Like I played a lot of R- RPGs on the, the DS. So mm-hmm. the um, DS I'm great. more of an RPG guy. So there was, there was a lot of good ones at the time there. I, I loved all the Pokemons on the Nintendo DS. Um, it, it, it was, it was just such a weird console because it it shouldn't have succeeded. Like it, it came out the same time as the PlayStation Portable, and everyone was like, "The PlayStation Portable is gonna beat this thing. It's it's gonna be it leave leave the whatever Nintendo's doing in the dust." And Nintendo just blew it away. Like everybody bought one, and like the weird touch screen thing worked somehow. Somehow, and uh, sometimes so. their shit works, and sometimes it doesn't. But when it when it hits, it hits. Yeah, and I remember everybody playing the DS. Like, and I was playing Mario Kart Networked with the DS. I was playing all the Pokemon games. I was playing um, all the other yeah, new Super Mario games, and yeah. So the 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 Wii DS era, I have a lot of a yeah. lot of positive memories. If if I if I had to like not choose Super Nintendo, it would be Wii. That's that's I would not have expected that. That's really interesting. Um, yeah, my, one of my other favorite games of all time is on the Wii. It's it's a uh, it's it's barely a game. It's called the Silent Hill Shattered Memories, and it's a Silent Hill game, but it's it's kind of like its own thing. It's it, they kind of build it as a remake of the first Silent Hill, and it kind of follows the same story. But then, as you play the game, you realize it's kind of doing. It's kind of like it's like fucking with you. <laughs> it's like it's it, 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 it like it sh- it notices where you're like staring in the game. It starts like building the game to like how you're making decisions and what you're looking at and how it's like almost like it's like a personality quiz, but you didn't know it was a personality quiz until you find out it was a personality quiz. <laughs> and it's it was like it was like one of the most is like an interactive media experience I've never had before. Wow. And I think nobody's really played it. And it's, it's a little, you know, it's a little bit janky cause it's on the Wii. So there's some motion control things. And, um, but I, uh, yeah, the Wii era, I, I had a lot of fun with. For me, it's, so it's either NES Genesis or N64. Those are my first three systems and they all have a good argument for the winner. <laughs> The NES um, is what got me into gaming. It's what captured my attention. And it's not like there's only three or four games that I really loved from it. It's like I loved just about everything I owned and I played the hell out of everything I owned. And I think as as much as there's a lot of NES games that don't hold up, there are a lot that do. It's It really made the difference of like, these. here's a playable thing. Um, but then Genesis for me, to, I didn't have a Super Nintendo. Genesis took it to a whole new level, really like things like X-Men Clone Wars and uh, of course the Sonics and uh, there's a, a, you know, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers uh, Streets of Rage type game and Aladdin um, that really, that really changed it for me. Like that was where I feel like I became a gamer. Like I, that was what made me start to read gaming magazines and become interested in what was Mortal Kombat. Of course, that's where I get into fighting games. That's where, Everything opens way up. And I really do like I recently played Mutant Apocalypse, X-Men Mutant, Mutant Apocalypse, which is looks yeah, it's Super Nintendo, looks really great, plays really great. Bigger sprites, colorful. And then I went over to Clone Wars, X-Men Clone Wars, and it's a little bit more muted, but there's something about like the kineticism of it and the the sound and the vibe and the t- to me it's like it's a very good example of like here's 
as an ass doing it really well, here's Genesis doing it really well. And then it comes down to your preference. And I prefer the Genesis take on it in that, in that case. I think I have to give it to N64, even though it doesn't age for me very well, because N64 is where I was like through the fucking roof thrilled about a new system. Like nothing had me up at night quite like yeah. thoughts of Super Mario 64 coming out and That's Wave true. Race and uh, uh, Mario Kart 64. I got two major bites at that because it came out when I was in like fifth grade and I played the hell out of it through high school and elementary school, middle school. And then when I went to college, we played it like crazy. Um, like we played, we played like a, a battle mode constantly, you know, the, with the balloons, like constantly, it was like, oh, we were yeah. like a constant state of playing it. Um, and what else was that? It, Ocarina of time was probably the first time where I was really like, Oh, this is what the future of video games will be. And I remember watching my friend play it and we would take turns, but mostly I was kind of like living through his fascination with it. And I remember that really like capturing my imagination. Um, so I think, yeah, I think, I think it probably has to go to N64, even though it's not one that I return to quite as much. Mario 64 is pretty special. Yeah. I, I will say, uh, another, uh, point in the, the Wii era is I love Super Mario Galaxy 2. I think that's, uh, Super mm. Mario Galaxy 2 is top 10 game yeah. for me. Yeah, definitely. We need a new top ten EJ. Thing. Yeah, just games. Maybe a top. Maybe yeah. Because I uh, besides Super Nintendo, the only one I could give a top ten is probably the Wii and the DS. Because like, if the past ten years I haven't played much games, yeah. <laughs> like in the grand scheme of things, I'm not like a gaming journalist, and I haven't. Uh, <laughs> well, you probably have, have GameCube games in there somewhere, right? With Melee. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So I could. I could. I could do GameCube. I could do N64. Like I could make one, but I have, there's not many games I like for those systems. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, I'll, I'll say this Ro rogue squadron and shadows, of the empire rank very high for yeah. in, N64 for me in terms of like nostalgia and, and obsessing over it. I mean, th those are games where it's like, I just wanted to get the hell home from school so I could play those games. Yeah. I didn't want to do anything else. I, and I, I yeah, so yeah, I, I would like to make another list, and I could probably I could speak a lot about the Wii era. I almost like I consumed way too many games in the Wii era. Like really, I have I I think I, I it's it might be the one system I have the most games for. It yeah. might be because I was just buying the like it was that weird era where you know I had a a job but not many responsibilities, so I was just buying games like. I didn't care at all. <laughs> but you were actually playing and I could, them. And I could play them too. And yeah, I could right, play them right. too. Because I'm so in the state the... right now, especially with the digital store, it, with five, a 512 gig card, I'm just like, yeah, I'd like the Mega Man Legacy Collection, but oh, yeah. I'm, never I'm never playing these things. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I can buy a bunch of discount trash too. <laughs> and, uh, and well, actually, some of it's really good stuff you can get for two bucks. You can get like, yeah, it's like every yeah, like, good Contra game for five bucks. It's like, okay. <laughs> Panzer Dragoon for $2 or, you know, remake of it. Yeah. And the, yeah, Castlevania collections, like you can get it all on the switch and then you're, you have so many awesome games and, uh, Rain you Man don't have time Legends to play for 10. Yeah. <laughs> and if you get it, so. yeah, if you get it all digital, it's just, you just walk around with a library of amazing games on, in your hands. That's why I'm, I'm concerned about this, uh, DRM thing. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. Yeah. I, you know, I'm hoping I, I've, 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 uh, misguided faith in Nintendo that they'll do the Apple model where you'll... They wouldn't have the balls to actually be like, yeah, sorry. All of those uh, purchases you made I on mean, that device are gone. I mean, I don't Why know. Why would you ever buy a non-physical game ever again if that happened? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping. I, I, I'm hoping, but I, again, Nintendo has done s sillier things. Yeah, yeah. We'd, we'd have to riot, I think. <laughs> Subscribe to Red Cow Entertainment on Patreon for full episodes every other week.